Okay, I got a question on obsession and uh, to talk about obsession and also from somebody who's uh, been on the spiritual path for a while and is a little bit um, um, <clears throat> despondent, shall we say, around uh, the obsession <clears throat> from where, where they are. What What is obsession? Well, obse you know, you can, like you typically talk about obsession for alcohol, obsession for drugs, for food, for a person, whatever it is. Um, and uh, obsession means, you know, so you've got thoughts, you've got meaningless thoughts. Meaningless thoughts, you don't, you won't get an obsession for because um, they're so meaningless, you don't, you don't really uh, notice them hardly and they just disappear as they arise, you know, like the grass is green, the blue sky. Yeah, it's not a thought that you tend to get obsessed about, <clears throat> even though it appeared, there's no meaning or value to that thought. Um, the more special or meaningful or magical, whatever you want to call it, uh, valuable a thought is projected to be, then the more is the tendency for it to uh, be harder to release into nothingness. And uh, and it's often if you challenge the ego and you go like, I don't want this thought about jam donuts any longer, ego, stop this, uh, you know, the ego will viciously react and put, give you more thoughts about jam donuts. So that's just, it's, um, you know, it's almost like you're, I uh, like something Hawkins said, it's like, if you commit to unconditional love, expect all the people and situations to arise in your life, which will reflect um, your conditionality. So the universe will orchestrate itself um, to align with you all the places you, you're unwilling to be unconditionally loving. So he, the thing with obsession is like, okay, you've been doing spiritual work and suddenly get obsessed with donuts, then you're getting obsessed with alcohol, then you're getting obsessed with how clean your house is, so, uh, which is dismaying. But it's usually when you're a committed spiritual student, um, the commitment to spirituality is to undo the ego, to reside in that infinite eternal presence, you know, to, to be in the flow, to be in that which is beyond limited thought and the bondages of the ego and separation. So as soon as you have that commitment, there will be times when the ego, um, in fear of losing its ground to God, uh, is going to come up with uh, aggressive challenges. You know, uh, it'll say it's got its armory of of special thoughts that it can it can it can snare you with, whether it's donuts or alcohol or a particular person, uh, and will suddenly uh, you might be making progress, and suddenly the ego will go, yeah, but what about the donuts? And then you'll get obsessed with the donuts. And so the ego is now challenging you. It can only challenge you on all the things that are still within its armory of um, of uh, meaningful things to uh, challenge you with. Because you can, you can transcend one after the other. So that's one aspect. So some people might let go of their obsession with alcohol, then later their drugs, and then later it's donuts. Later it's a particular person that they're obsessed with. So on and on it goes. And... Um, now, the, why, you know, usually um, you can get to a place which is called transcendence, which means it doesn't come back. But transcendence of a thought, i.e. cancelling a belief in it, saying it's meaningless, working the course of miracles on it, doing a lot of whatever spiritual avenue you do on it, it will tend to become meaningless. But there's a, a larger aspect, which is the level of ego inflation. So even if you do a lot of work on letting go of the donut obsession, um, if you still got a lot of ego, a lot of stuff within your ego, grievances, fears, uh, need to be in control and, and such like, then um, the ego will very easily and quickly uh, bring up another obsession because you're still quite disconnected from that those flow states from the infinite light, um, from the infinite presence. So the ego is quite dominant when we'll um, bring in something again. So the other thing is, to, I would say, on obsession is um, if you've been a, a spiritual seeker for a while or, or a student for a while, is not to judge yourself uh, because, um, like Hawkins said, you know, he um, at the last gateway, I mean, he was very advanced, but, you know, the, even the, the fear of the terror of the death of the ego came up at the end, which is an enormous one. Um, the idea that the ego is the source of life 
And if you lose your ego, you have no life. So don't do it, you know, and you have to go through that. So, that, so there are enormous challenges as you make progress. The ego will keep battling away even when you get to advanced levels. Um, also, can, what can happen is you can have, um, uh, uh, as has been shared, you know, you can have relapses back into the ego and things that you thought you'd taken away start to flare back up again. You know, so while you're feeling peaceful and blissful and in the flow state, it's like the, the donut obsession is far away. But suddenly, if you get upset about uh, the bills, then suddenly that donut obsession can come back when you thought you let it go. So that's just because um, as soon as you start identifying with anything within the ego, whether it's a resentment, a fear or whatever, um, as soon as you start or just... Um, uh, as soon as you start identifying with anything within the ego, then um, it, it what's happening is as soon as you identify with a grievance or with a fear, even though you've done a lot of work on the donut obsession, if you re-identify with the fear about the bills or whatever it is, or you're going to lose that person or whatever it is, then what happens is your your level of consciousness drops, your connection to the light drops. And so the ego quickly re-establishes a donut addiction which you thought you'd let go of so in that way um in that way uh, you need um uh, that's why things come back even though you think you might have transcended it and sometimes without working on your donut obsession you'll just go to a higher more elevated state and the donut dis uh, obsession will just disappear um the ego constantly while it's still got things repressed feelings and special things that have meaning to you, um, the ego will continue to challenge it. So the, I mean, it's basically what Hawkins and Buddha are saying. You're only totally free of your ego uh, at the level of enlightenment. When when the last, um, the death of the ego occurs, then it can't reinflate. A lot of spiritual seekers are dismayed because they go off into these beautiful bliss flow states, timeless states. And then um, they see a, a bill come through the door uh, they suddenly um, s someone offers them a jam donut or um, you know, a, a loved one it, you suddenly know is going to die soon and then uh, suddenly the ego starts becoming inflated uh, and then uh, the ego which is so threatened by your spiritual work will quickly try and drag you into any kind of obsession and darkness so uh, it's just par for the course the other thing you, you don't you don't know is not to judge yourself is because there's um, so much karma you're unaware of within your ego. And some of it's time related. So it only hits you at certain ages. Um, so if you look into past life research, um, you know, it's like uh, various things happen in certain circumstances. So it's like life is waiting for certain circumstances to give you certain challenges which you need to face. And even though you've faced a lot of other challenges and you're actually doing well, you might have to face these uh, karm karmic challenges which still have to come in later on. Now, there's also various um, collective karmas we all face, like the karma of getting old and the body dying, uh, the karma of loved the ones uh, the ego projects with attachment dying. So these are just general uh, collective karmas. So that you know, getting old, you're not going to face the, the collective karma of old age when you're 15 years old. There's just not one you're going to be uh, fighting against. Uh, but uh, it is, it's something that will come at a certain date. So and, and so you can't judge yourself. Uh, like I did so much spiritual work and now I've got some wrinkles. Um, uh, and I thought I'd done enough spiritual work. You know, there's still you've got to transcend that. That's a, like a time related um, karma. So don't judge yourself. You, you probably another way to see it to frame it differently is um, if you get good patches and then you're hit viciously by the ego, it just means that ego is really threatened by your progress. And so it's really in a panic trying to derail your progress. Okay. 